Okay, this is going to be a quick video on uh, the Nano Terminal Text Editor. Okay, if you go to the course website, cs.indstate.edu slash tilde lma1, go to your particular course under tutorial, tutorials, we have Nano Terminal Text Editor here, and this is the view on the webpage. First, there are these shortcuts, which we'll go over, but before we do that, um, we'll uh, look at installation. This is really more configuration than installation. Um, it's already installed by default, but what we're going to do is add some configurations to uh, help show you how to, how to use Atom and make it a little bit more efficient as you're, you're coding. All right. <clears throat> so first, let's open up a terminal, and we can log into the CSS server, or if you're doing this on your local machine, you can just execute these commands on your local machine instead. SSH, CS, so I'm going to configure Nano uh, on the CS server. So when I log into the CS server, Nano will be working the way I would like it to do, uh, to, to work. So <clears throat> first, let's find out where uh, Nano is located. Using the which command, that tells you where a particular file is located, or where a particular command is located. All commands are really just uh, programs, they're files that are executed. Um, so where is the command? We use the which command, and the command we're looking for is nano. All right. So it says that nano is located in the root of the file system under the user directory, then under bin, and then nano is that file. Okay. So normally I can say nano uh, hi.txt, and it opens nano. Okay. If I hit Control X, it closes. So since all, uh, since most commands are just files anyway, I can Type, type the absolute path to the command itself. So slash user slash bin slash nano. And that's the same thing as just typing the nano command. All right. So the reason I can just type nano is because slash user slash bin is in my path variable. If I type echo path, these are all the directories when I type a command that my shell looks in for uh, files in there that are named nano. So when I type nano, it looks through each one of these one by one looking for a file called nano, and if it finds one, then it's gonna run it. So user slash local slash bin, right? We want slash user slash bin, so that's in here somewhere, and that's the very next one, slash user slash bin. So it sees it in this, this folder, and then it executes that command, all right? So, <clears throat> nano has many different options. If you use the man command and nano, you can view all of these different options. Okay, so here's a listing of all the different options you can add. All right, I'm going to tell you the options that I like, and you can look those up and configure them um, uh, a little more. If you don't like some of the ones that I have, then that's fine. So, let's see. First of all, uh, hopefully you've all changed your shell to Z shell. If not, uh, change shell dash S and then slash bin slash ZSH. That will change your shell to Z shell and you'll have to log out and log back in and then Z shell will be your default shell. If you're not sure what your shell is, type echo shell. The casing matters, all capital letters. So that's my shell. All right, so everyone should change their shell to Z shell, and if you've done that, then you can create a file that's called .zshrc. The RC stands for uh, run commands. All right, so ZSH is my shell. Every time I log into the system, the .zshrc file executes. All right, it's sourced. And if we look, I've already created one in past videos, and we can look and see what mine is. I can say nano. Uh, dot zshrc and it should just be in your home folder okay so I've, I've logged in and I'm in my home folder and so what mine does is it says hello gives me a compliment complimentary mess message there and then I added a directory to my path so that way every time I log in I have my own personal uh, folder that has any any commands or any programs that I want to put in there and um, I can execute them on the command line like any other command all right so what we're going to do in this file is <clears throat> we're going to add an alias for nano. Okay. Now, basically, whenever I t 
type in nano instead of looking throughout the path for a program it's going to use this this alias all right so when I type nano this is actually what's going the command that's going to be executed so I'm gonna go to user slash slash user slash bin slash nano and then I want to add any options okay I like to use this set of options and we can go through and look at what they all do here in a minute and then uh, you can see the difference okay so these are the options that I like if you have your Z shell uh, configured then you can add this .zshrc file and add an alias for nano and these are all much better options than the defaults in my opinion all right so then I would save this file and then in order to get that um, the .zshrc file to run I either need to exit and log back in or I can type dot which means source this file and dot zshrc okay so dot is another way of saying source but it basically just means run this file in your current shell okay so you see that it echoed that that message at the beginning so we know that the zshrc uh, ZSH file is actually run so now when I type nano I, all of my commands if I type which nano now you see it says it's alias before it this is what it's now alias to. Before when we typed uh, which nano, you see it was pointing to that particular uh, program, the nano program itself in slash user slash bin slash nano. All right. So, <clears throat> so now we, when we execute nano, instead this is what gets executed. Okay. So instead of having to type this out every time, I could type it up out every time slash user slash bin slash nano that's the nano command and then I could type in all these options e m w a c u w dollar sign and then I could say i dot p y okay so I could type them all out every time but that's kind of a pain so generally speaking I always want these options which is my why I've made this alias okay so now We've run our .zshrc file, and I can just type nano hi .py, and it creates everything with the options that I have. Okay, so one of the most important options that I've made is uh, has to do with indentation. Since we're doing Python, indentation is very very important. Okay, so when I indent, when I press tab. Normally in nano, the tab character is just a tab character and it's saved as such. With the options that I have, when you hit tab, it actually instead inserts four spaces instead of a tab character. Okay, I highly recommend everyone does this. It will make indentation much, much simpler. All right. If you mix tabs and spaces for indentation in Python, it gets really hairy and the editors and uh, Python itself doesn't like it sometimes. Okay, So it's very important that you use consistent indentation and this is just one way we can do that. All right, so I'll exit out of that. <clears throat> and then uh, I'll leave these options for you to look at yourself, um, but they're all pretty standard and they're pretty good. But if you type man and uh, nano you can look up what each one of those options does okay so dash e the option capital E changes tabs to spaces right and then I had some other ones Let's see what else did I have trim blanks okay so this snips off trailing white space um, W uh, word bounds so <clears throat> detect word boundaries differently that has to do with word wrap so a lot of these options have to do with when a line is longer than the width of the terminal and how do you handle that situation does the line wrap or not and um, does it wrap between words or not between words and that sort of thing okay so you can look up the rest of these but I just I would recommend you just copy what I have here all right and then there's a couple shortcuts I want to go over in nano all right so some of these shortcuts are very important. So let's open nano. <clears throat> .py. Okay, so as you write some Python code, 
This is a for loop that's going to print out loop every single time, and then it's going to print out the value of i. All right. Now, if I have a whole bunch of code here, it's it's very helpful sometimes for me to know what line number something is on. Okay. So one of the options I have down here shows you cursor position. So when I move my cursor, you see column is changing. So that's left and right. Which column is my cursor in? All right. And then there's also line. I'm on line two out of five. Two out of five, that's not normally that big of a deal. But when you have a file that's hundreds and hundreds of lines, then it becomes very important to know where particular code exists or know where it lives. A nicer way to do line numbers <coughs> is with Alt Shift 3, and then it gives you a line number for each item. All right, so this is helpful if you need to visualize it on the side. The problem with this is when you go to copy and paste, if I copy this hot whole thing and I have the line numbers on the side, then when I go to paste it in a text editor, the number, the line numbers come with it. Okay, so if you're going to copy and paste, you want to make sure that's off. So that's Alt, Shift, and 3. It's very handy. You don't necessarily need it because we have it configured to do the line number here, but it is kind of nice to see it sometimes. Okay, so by default, I have it off, but it's good to know how to turn it back on. Alt, Shift, 3. Alt, Shift, 3. Okay, so some of these shortcuts are very nice to know. The help text in Nano is Control G, and this basically gives you all of all of the different things you can do inside. All right, these ones that I have here are just the most useful ones and the most common ones. But this is the whole uh, gamut of uh, Nano commands that you can do inside of Nano. All right, so that's helpful to know that, that exists. All right, and then it says down here, Control X will close this help. All right, so we're back in Nano. <clears throat> Uh, so to cut a line of text, you hit Control K. Nano has its own clipboard. It doesn't use a system clipboard. Okay, so you can't cut and paste very easily uh, from Nano to another command or to uh, another part of the operating system. If you want to copy and paste that way, you'll have to highlight the text and then hit Control Shift C to copy and to paste. You'll have to place your cursor where you want the paste to happen. So I can copy this. Control Shift C and then place my cursor down at the bottom and Control Shift V will paste. All right. <clears throat> um, now to use the Nano clipboard, it's just a clipboard inside of Nano. I can hit Control K and then say I want to move that line down there. I hit Control U to uncut. So K is cut and Control U is uncut. And I can hit Control K multiple times. Right, let's go to the top. Control K, 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 well, however many times I hit Control K, then if I hit Control U, then it all pastes. All four of those lines, even the blank line there at the end, were pasted right back in there. All right, so that's kind of how you copy and paste. There is no uh, copy because you, if you need to copy, you just cut all the lines. Uh, go back up here, three, four, and then unpaste it, and then you can paste, uncut it again, and that's basically a copy. Excuse me. So to save a file, it's Control O, right? Uh, or if the file already already exists, uh, you can hit Control S. Um, to quit is Control X, and then undo and redo. So if I did something in, <clears throat> for example, if I accidentally pasted in a whole bunch of stuff that I didn't want to, uh, say I copied this, and then I hit Control Shift V because that's how you paste from the system clipboard and then I realized I don't want that in there and I don't want to have to hit control K a whole bunch of times uh, instead I can hit uh, the undo command which is alt U so alt key and then U and it actually does it one at a time because when you paste from the system clipboard it actually writes things in one line at a time in nano and then you can redo with alt E and then it'll put it all back Okay. Uh, auto indent. Um, it's kind of a nice feature, but it seems to be a little bit uh, more of a pain than it's worth. So basically, when I have um, 
in programming there's a lot of indentation you have to do so on this next line if if I have something indented alright auto indent basically when I press enter instead of going back to the very beginning of the line it'll go up here like I said it tends to be more trouble than it's worth so I don't normally have it on by default for my nano installs so alt I turns it on though and if I press enter you see that my cursor automatically goes to the indentation level of the previous line All right. now this is tricky when you have a situation where you're pasting code this is why I said it's more trouble than it's worth sometimes okay so let's say I'm pasting in this code and I have auto indent on since I'm pasting in code from an external place if I hit control V it it tries to indent every single time and my indentation gets very skewed you see it's not indented properly let's say I have print I a whole bunch of times here watch what happens when I have auto indent on which I do right now and I had to turn it on manually so if I delete these lines and then I want to try to paste so it tries to indent but then I also have an indent here so it automatically indents and then puts an extra indent and then I press enter and so it automatically indents and then prints an extra one right so if you get this type of situation that means auto indent is on and you need to turn that off highly recommend you have it off most of the time um, it like I said it's more trouble than it's worth most mostly so <clears throat> we can uh, let's see alt U to undo all of this there we go and then like I said uh, I like to turn it off so alt I turns off auto indent and you see down here it says auto indent disabled and now we're back to when I press enter it goes to the beginning of the line okay and we got anything else here line numbers and cursor position okay so the cursor position here you can turn that on and off but you pretty much always want it on so that's uh, the quick quick and dirty um, nano introduction and configuration okay